Welcome to Kingdom Connection with Pastor Jensen Franklin. Have you ever felt stuck in a habit, a behavior, or a negative thought pattern? I sure have. Sometimes it feels impossible to break out of the cycle. There's a voice whispering in our ear that we will never have victory. If you think that's the voice of God, I can assure you it's not. God is pulling for you. He's fighting for you. God does the things we can't do. But we have to do what we can do as an expression of faith in Him. Friend, there is always more peace, more joy, and more freedom in Christ. Trust God. Run toward what's keeping you in bondage and watch what He does. I want you to look with me in Proverbs 22 and verse 13. It says, the lazy man, some translations say the slothful man, the lazy man says there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. That's it. That's what I want to preach on. The sluggard or the lazy man, one translation said, the man who's not a self-starter makes excuses. Isn't that powerful? He says, I can't do what I'm supposed to do, what I'm called to do, what I'm put here for a reason to do because there's a lion in the street. There was no lion in the street. But he was making an excuse for why he could not do well. He was blaming circumstances in life and he said, I'm just going to stay here because there's a lion in the street. What's the point of trying? What's the point of believing for something good? What's the point of getting out there and, and giving it all that I've got? There's a lion in the street. The answer that you need to have is one of self understanding that I have to be filled with the word of God and the promises of God so that I don't offer excuses as to why I'm not doing what God has called me to do. This man is a man who's living under the bondage of excuses. The Bible said work out your own salvation. In other words, you've got to do your own praying. You, got, you can't blame it on this, that, and the other. You've got to do your own worshiping. You've got to do your own coming to the house of God. You've got to do your own of breaking this book, book open. Your father's faith or granny's faith, it will not get you to heaven. And if you keep saying and offering ex excuses as to why you can't live for God, I can't live it, I can't do it, I can't overcome it. I can't get free. I tried it and I can't do it. And I just give up. There's a lion in the street. What the enemy has done is he has built up a stronghold in your mind. The lazy man says, there's a lion in the street and I can't do, I can't do the work. I can't go after the dream. I can't go to college. I can't, I can't do what I thought I would do with my life because there's a lion in the street. He creates an imaginary problem for justifying staying inside of that place of defeat. He excuses himself from doing what he ought to do, what he's supposed to be, and what he's supposed to accomplish in life because he's living in excuses. Well, everybody else, or this or that, or this or that, and it's nothing but Lions in the street. There is not a lion in the street. It's an imaginary problem. Meaning, meaning that the enemy has filled the mind of this man with the concept, what's the use? You can't do it. And he's making up an excuse that there's a lion, but it's an imaginary lion. You need to be set free from your fear in this new year. Your inhibitions, your doubts, and your unholy imaginations. Because they will hold you back. They will defeat you. 
And they will rob you of God's will for your life. You need to say like the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Enough with the excuses. Enough with justifying failure in your life. If you want to get free, you can get free. If you want to change, you can change. If you want to be a better person, you can be a better person. If you want to have joy, you can have joy. It's a lion in the street, and that lion has convinced you in your mind that you cannot change. But I'm here to slay some lions today with the word, which is the sword of the spirit. I believe before we leave this room, there are going to be dead carcass lions spiritually laid on the ground in your home, in your family, in your marriage, and in your and in your dream, God is going to slay some lions. Clap your hands and believe God for something great. Amen. I love this now. You got to track with me because as sure as I'm standing here, the Lord told me that somebody would be here who's already said, I can't live for God. I've tried it and I can't change. I've gone too far down the road. I got too much stuff. I've gotten into too much. I know too much. I've experienced and I can't quit. I can't change. I can't get out of this house because there's a lion in the street. Well, here's what the Bible says. Everybody got a Bible? If you don't have one, you got one in your phone. If you don't, get one in your phone. But everybody hold your Bible up right now. Just hold it up. Just hold it up. Everybody hold it up in the air. Hold it up in the air. Why are you doing that? Because that makes the devil nervous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, here's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Listen to this, to the pulling down of strongholds, and notice this statement that most people totally ignore, and casting down imaginations. That's that line in the street, imaginations. The word imaginations comes from the word image. In other words, Satan feeds you words and thoughts that create an image in your mind. An image of a failure, an image of an addict, an image of a person who can't stop and can't change. And I've been smoking for 30 years and I, ain't go, I can't quit. I've been, I, I've been drinking, I can't quit. I can't stop, I can't change. I, I keep going right back like the, I, I come, I pray, I get saved. But what, where's the battle at? Casting down imaginations. First of all, he said, pull down strongholds. Strongholds are things that are external that block you from your progress uh, uh, on the journey to your purpose. But but what I want you to see is that's outside things. That's that's physical things sometimes. That's situations we face in life. But notice the real danger too is imaginations are internal, not external, and casting down those imaginations. See, the, the devil wants you to have an image of you're not going to change. Nothing's going to happen good for you. Nothing good is going to... Your, your life is, is useless. He wants the image that he fed you to be in your mind that you can't live it. None of your friends are living it. Nobody's living it. That is a lie. And you need to cast it down. God's going to have somebody who's going to live it. And you know what? You need to ask yourself, are you happier? Are you happier now that you've embraced a life where the enemy has shown you an image that you are nothing but a slave to sin? Are you happy? It won't make you happy. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. And I need some people who believe it still to shout like it's the truth. You know what? I'm waxing. I'm waxing strong right now. I feel the Lord saying I want somebody to boldly proclaim that you cannot let anything, the battle that is going on is the battle for your mind. It's so true. Many are fighting wars in their minds. And if that 
thing does not line up with what God says about you, it's a lie. And you need to cast down that imagination and run to the Lord. That's what I'm preaching on. Run to the Lord. If there's a line out there saying you can't do it, you can't live it, run to the Lord. Pray and say, you know what? Here's the Word of God. And I'm going to fight for my dreams. And I'm going to fight for my future. And I'm going to fight for my freedom because Jesus purchased did it count? I can't live for God. I can't be faithful. I can't stop lying. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, let me tell you what Philippians 4 and verse 8 said. Throw it up. Philippians 4 and verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely. That didn't sell them up. None of that has said depressed, defeated, beat up, kicked in the teeth, and tore up from the floor up. Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, think on these things and you will begin to slay the lion. Imaginary problems that make us live in excuses. Excuses. In Mark chapter 5, and it's the same story in the book of Luke, I think it's the 8th chapter. But there's a man who is so demon possessed that he had a legion of demons. A legion is 6,000. 6,000, it was a reference to the Roman squadron that had 6,000 soldiers in it. Now listen to me. This man had a real problem. The Bible described him as someone who so hated himself that he cut himself. See, that's a stronghold. That's an image that is that is taken root in his thinking. And now he hates himself and he's cutting himself. And they said no man could tame him. The counselor couldn't help him. The, 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 this common sense people talking with him and trying to reason, they couldn't help him. And, and, and counselors couldn't help him. Psychologists couldn't. Pills couldn't. Nothing could help him. They would put him in chains and those demons would give him supernatural strength and he would break the chains. This man had a real problem. And the moment he encountered Jesus, he didn't offer any excuses. He had a real problem and he fell down at his feet and the Bible said he was set free by Jesus and he was found sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. If a man with a real problem could have one service, one encounter with Jesus, and it set him that free, what can God do for many of you who have an incredible future, but you're allowing a lion in the street an excuse to tell you you'll never be free, you'll never succeed, you'll never be worth anything. It's a lying spirit, and we need to slay the lion. It's an imaginary problem. When I read in 1 Samuel 22 about David, this week I, I saw that the Bible said 400 men came to David when he went to this cave. He was afraid of Saul and he was hiding in a cave and 400 men who were in debt, who were in distress, who were discontent, which means their life was just miserable. They were in distress. They didn't have answers. They couldn't fix nothing. It was spinning out of control. They were in debt, which in Bible days meant they could take your children and to, to pay your price. If you didn't pay the debt, they could enslave family members to become slaves to pay the debt. It was a serious situation and 400 men who had no dream came to a man in a cave who had a dream because he had, been, he had been anointed to be king of Israel. If you don't have a dream, don't hang around other people who are in the pit too. 
get around somebody who has a dream that God has given them. Listen, because dreams are highly contagious. If you get around the right people, they will stir up the gift that is within you. If you get around the wrong people, they will destroy the gift that is within you. But I don't want church to be a bunch of do this and don't do that and do this. What? Well, first of all, you got to fall in love with Jesus, the one who bled and died, the one who suffered, the one who carried your shame, carried your pain, and carried your, your, your failure. He carried that to the cross and crucified it. Don't tell me the gospel doesn't work. To do so is to spit in that Savior's face. It works. It works. And when they get in the cave, David has 400 men who are defeated. And they're all in this cave, this big cave. And the scripture said the prophet came to him and he said these words, Thus says the Lord, Abide not in the hold, but go to the land of Judah. Don't abide here. You're, you're being held here. And you're using excuses as to why you're staying here. And I can't make mighty men out of these people that I sent to you, David, in a cave. You can't sit here and make excuses. There's a line in the street. There's a line in the street. You've got to say, all right, Lord, I'm coming out of this hold. And he said, he said, abide not in the hold. But here's how you do it. Go to the land of Judah. The word Judah means praise. When Leah was trying to please her husband Jacob, she thought because he doesn't love me, he loves my sister. Because he wanted to marry Rachel. You remember the story in the Bible? But they tricked and put a veil over Leah and he accidentally married her and he didn't know it until the next day. And he didn't love her. This is in your Bible if you'd read it. He didn't love her. And she started having babies with him. And she said every time, she had three children, three boys, that became the tribes of Israel. And on the third child, she said, the first one, she said, this time, this, this, he'll love me because I'm giving him, Rachel's barren, she can't have children. I'm giving him babies so he'll love me. I'm giving him sons, I'm giving him heirs. And you know what? The Bible said he didn't love her. She had another baby and she said, he'll love me. And no. She had another baby. He'll love me. No. Then she had that fourth one. And, he, and she said, I'm going to name this one myself. And she said, I'm going to name this child. This time, I will praise. In other words, I am not going to allow the fact that this situation is, is real. But I'm going to the land of Judah. Don't stay in the hold. Go to the land of Judah. Begin to praise the Lord. I'm not going to say I can't live it because nobody else. I cast them down. I raise my hands. I'm coming out of the hold that the enemies had me in. And I'm coming out with praise to Jehovah God, Jesus Christ the Messiah. I'm tired of letting lions I've imagined keep me in bondage, keep me in excuses, keep me in isolation. And friend, the enemy will not stop there. He'll bring more and more and more and more if you let him. Get your sword out and slay some lions. Destroy imaginary Images of the, that have taken up residence that doesn't show you who you are in Christ. Get free from alcoholism.
get free from drugs. They're going to destroy you. Get free from immorality. Abide not in the hole. Face your fears. Fight for your dreams. Quit holding back. Quit holding out. Quit running away. And run to the roar. And say, with God's help, I can do all things. If he said it, he can back it up. Quit, quit being afraid. Listen, this is a big point. If you're looking for an excuse, you'll always find one. If you're looking for an excuse why you can't live for the Lord, you'll find them every day. We spend our lives running away from things we're afraid of. Quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. I, I can't. There's, there's a line in the street. There's a line in the street. Face your fears. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. There's this verse in 2 Samuel 23 and verse 20 that I really want you to get a hold of. It says this. It says, that another time, this man named Benaiah, on a snowy day, he chased a lion. I, 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 for some reason, I missed that phrase. He chased a lion. Normal people don't chase lions. Lions chase normal people. But I'm praying that something I would say today will not make your mentality be so weak that as you go into a new year, you will make excuses and say there's a lion in the street. If there is a lion in the street, chase the roar. He chased a lion. And the next verse says, and God gave him a great victory. He slew the lion. And if your dream doesn't scare you, it's too little. When everything is said and done, God is not going to say to you, well said, thou good and faithful servant. Well thought. Well planned. Man, you really wrote out a life plan? Wow. There's one measuring stick. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Faithfulness is not holding the fort. God has called us to play offense with our lives. Not to be afraid of the lions in the streets. I read something this week about a, a, a screenwriter, famous screenwriter, screenwriter in New York City. And he does this big seminar and this guy said the bottom line on it. He sat through hours and hours and hours for people who feel like that they have a gift of writing. They want to write stories and create movies and, and pitch ideas and, and, you know, and that's their gifting. And so this man is so valuable that people pay thousands and thousands of dollars because he's had so many successful hits and movies and things. And one of the biggest things he said that he took from hearing this was this. So he sat through hours and hours of amazing amazing insights from this screenwriter. But the biggest thing he said, if you're going to be a great storyteller, number one, here it is. No conflict, no story. No conflict, no story. I just want the Lord to really bless me and give me a, 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 a clear coast all the way from, from here to heaven. I don't want to encounter any giants and I sure don't want that. And why am I going, why did we go through 2020? <laughs> no conflict. No story. Epic movies demand epic conflicts. That's what makes it epic. For David, it was picking a fight with a giant. For Elijah, he was picking a fight with 400 false prophets. No conflict, no story. For Benaiah, it was chasing a lion. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was being thrown into a fiery furnace. 
but no, no conflict, no story. And God's going to get glory out of the conflicts we've been through if we won't let the lions in the street stop us. Come on, take a praise break. Don't stay in the hole. Go to the land of Judah. Let me finish. God has not called us to be scaredy cats. He's called us to be lion chasers. I'm tired of beat up Christians. Nobody's making light. The pain is real. The suffering is real. The death is real. But are we to just let the lion in the street kill everything that we know God has promised us? No, sir. No way. No conflict. No epic story. God is in the business of helping us overcome our fears. I close with this. But I made up my mind I'm going to run toward the roar. The roar. And you can be a scaredy cat or you can be a lion chaser, but you can't be both. And, you know, we hear that little saying, ready? When they start a race, ready? Get set? And that's how we think God operates in our life. Ready? You ready for this? Everything's perfect. Everything's good. Got all the money lined up. Got all the, everything that you need. Everything, just ready? Ready. Set? Everything is set. Oh, it's all set. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go, Lord. But God says, no, I invert that. God says, go. Get set. And then ready. But he says, nothing happens in the kingdom till you go. You take the first step before God shows you the second step. And that's the definition of faith. You take the first step before God takes the second step. And God says, now I say go. Well, I'm waiting on God. Then you'll be waiting until the day you die. I was not ready. God, I was not ready when, when God told me to get married. I was not ready. Cherise was not ready. She was 18 years old. I was 20 something. And neither one of us, 25, and we were not ready.
But it was God's timing. It was God's will. And God says, ready, get set. God's, we say, ready, get set, go. God says, go, get set, ready. I was not ready to pastor this church. I'd never pastored a church before. I was 28 years old. Sharice was, how old would she be? She was, was she, was she 19 when we came here or something like that? 19 year old pastor's wife. I mean, she needed a whipping from her mother with, with a belt some of those days. And she's the pastor's wife. Ready? No, God said, go. Go, get set, and I'll make you ready. I don't call the qualified, I qualify the call. I close with this. But in Psalms 91, it says one verse that, I, that, that got a hold of me. I, I've read it many times, but somehow I missed this. You will trample the lion. You will trample the lion. And I prayed and I said, Lord, give me a word for the new year. And it seemed like the Lord said to me yesterday in Joshua 3 and verse 5, Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And I want to ask you something. How many of you in a new year want to do amazing things for God with your life? Let me see your hand. All right? You just got tricked. That was a trick question because that's the wrong answer. He never said that you would do amazing things. He said, my job is to do amazing things. Your job is to consecrate yourself. And if you'll step out on ready. See, some of you right now are offering excuses as to why you're not going to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You're listening to the lion in the street. I can't live it. It ain't going to make a difference. Nothing's going to change. Well, let's put God to a test. And I'm not going to let the lion in the street stop me from chasing my dream. I'm going to run to the Lord. The Lord said, announce amazing is on the way. Amazing is on the way. Get up on your feet and clap your hands like you are going to the land of Judah and coming out of the hole. Slay some lions. Woo, praise God. Now I want to ask you something. Still and quiet. Still and quiet. I want to ask you something. Are you going to just go through excuses as to why you can't do it? When the Bible clearly just told you you can do all things through Christ to strengthen you. But I want you to bow your head for just one moment. Don't offer God excuses. You don't have to be bound. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to be a failure. You don't have to be a slave to drugs or addiction or immorality. You don't have to live that way. It's a lion in the street. Let Jesus cast down those imaginations. Give you a new image of who he sees you are. Are you ready? Pastor, you're talking to me. I want to change my life by receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm backslid or I've, I've never given my heart to the Lord. This is all new to me, but I really feel that I'm done with excuses. I'm ready to give God my life. Pray for me. If that's you, raise your hand as high as you can get it. I want to pray for you. Yes, 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 yes. This is powerful. Yes, yes, yes. Raise that hand high. Raise that hand high. There's no shame in it. There's victory in it. Beautiful, beautiful. Keep it high. Keep it high. My goodness, hands all over the street. Pray this prayer, everyone, out loud. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. 
I surrender everything to you. I surrender everything to you. Wash me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Now, I slay the lions that have held me back. Say this, no more excuses. I give myself to you. And in Jesus' name, I am forgiven. Praise the Lord. I have a new life. And I'll have a new year that's filled with Jesus. A miracle just happened in your heart. Your name went down in the Lamb's book of life. Kingdom Connection is a soul-winning ministry that is reaching the world through broadcasting, expanding into new church campuses, and global acts of compassion. By using the technology of today to fulfill the Great Commission, we are able to connect with countless people and reach hundreds of thousands of lives. Our broadcast connects with people like you all around the world with messages that speak to them. Our ministry exists to help build a connection for strengthening your faith and living out your God-given purpose. And our missions and relief work help connect you to desperate situations, showing the love of Christ through global acts of compassion. We feel the time is right and God is leading us to grow, and that only happens when you partner with us through Connection Partnership. With as little as a dollar a day, you'll be helping us reach further than we've ever been before. To become a part of this ministry and enjoy exclusive partner benefits, visit us online at jensenfranklin.org. Hope starts with you. Together, we can do something incredible for the kingdom of God. Your support helps us preach the gospel to over 200 nations around the globe, produce inspirational resources, and continue support for outreach projects. All donations received through a campaign are subject to redirection at the discretion of the organization.
nó có thể giữ lại được trong bàn tay anh nhưng biết sao giờ đây em đang xa rồi đâu I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the fake shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each do what they, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin